better. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. It's great fun. I'm going to give you 15 minutes on nitric oxide, fast as a whip. And uh, I put in that little red thing on the bottom that I did receive royalties from the sales of nitric oxide. The patents in the United States have expired. The patents in Europe uh, are holding on babies. So they are, there still are some royalties to come. I come from the Mass General, as you know, a, very, a place known for breathing things. And so as an anesthesiologist who did intensive care, I thought a lot about breathing and how important breathing drugs would be. And I spent, as you know, if you heard me this morning, I spent a year in Paris with this man who was really my intellectual father in many ways. He was an extraordinary man in French intensive care medicine. Unfortunately, he died the year after I left. He died a year later of coronary disease. And here he is with Francois Le Maire, two very important people in shaping my mind and helping me do my first clinical trials here. This is what an ECMO machine looked like in 1975, in case some of you wonder. Uh, we built our own everything. And this is the Colabo spiral coil in the middle here. And this is a young lady on veno-arterial bypass. So I kind of wet my my uh, <clears throat> feet in respiratory failure, taking care of people with treacherously awful. 50% uh, shunt was the minimum for me to try and work on them. This was the daughter of a very famous Tennessee folk singer who uh, had, a, had a problem about pregnancy and a very bad lung injury. And we bypassed her for almost a month. But of course, I'd started even earlier and I'd worked at NIH, and I did the first sheep experiments with Ted Colabo. I was interested in sheep, and he was interested in membrane lungs. And this is a sheep in an artificial placenta. And I went to, I started to do babies by AV shunt, umbilical AV catheterization. And I went to Puerto Rico, and I did 10 premature babies, and they all bled into their heads on AV ECMO. So, that was my baptism of ECMO in trying to reverse respiratory failure. So where this comes in is about 1980. And this is what it looks like at 1980. This is the spiral coil membrane lung. Here's a little baby. We drain the blood out. We pump it around. And we return it to the baby. Uh, pediatricians hate ECMO. They'll never love it. They hate it because about 10 or 15 percent of the babies bleed into their heads. Uh, these kids are obviously very, very delicate. And although ECMO is a brilliant invention, and I spent 20 years working on it, it sure seemed to us that it would be, it would be wonderful if we could do it simpler and quicker by dilating the pulmonary circulation. So I spent a number of years infusing in adults and some children with ARDS various vasodilators to see if I could dilate their pulmonary circulation. And then along came the NO hypothesis. Someone was trying to get me to move to Los Angeles, who then got the Nobel Prize. Maybe I should have gone. <laughs> he said, uh, since nitric oxide was discovered in about 1987 as a molecule made from arginine by nitric oxide synthase 3, and that maybe pulmonary endothelial cells were injured in various diseases, or maybe the message hadn't come up yet at the time of birth, and maybe we could breathe it in from the outside and supplement this natural molecule. So we're supplementing a natural molecule by breathing it. And because it reacts so quickly with hemoglobin by the nitric oxide dioxygenation reaction, the NOD reaction, it basically extinguishes itself almost immediately, forming nitrite and nitrate, which you pee out in your urine. But it does not dilate the systemic vasculature, something we dreamed about. We tried everything under the sun and nothing seemed to work. And we wondered if a respiratory attack would work. And in a nutshell, uh, we did our first baby in 1990. Uh, 
in January of 90, Jay Roberts and I, and you can see why you wouldn't have used the systemic vasodilator, because over here, the blood pressure and the PO2 were both around 30 or 35. If you drop the kid's blood pressure, and people try priscoline to dilate the pulmonary circulation on babies, and although they wrote wonderful papers about them, they killed a lot of babies. So we knew we would be interested in something which would, could slip into the nitrogen stream, dropping the FiO2 to 0.9. And you could see by giving 20, 40, and 80 parts per million, we didn't change the baby's blood pressure, but we raised the baby's PO2. Now, if we're talking about ARDS today, there isn't that kind of smooth muscle in most adults. And so the vasodilation that you'll see with nitric oxide isn't going to be as marked as what we see in children. In children, we see a wonderful response because they're little vasospastic creatures because, like you, they were inside their mother for nine months, and they didn't need their lungs, did they? So they had nice, tight pulmonary vasoconstriction. And then when you're born and you take that first breath, <sighs> you've got to dilate your pulmonary circulation by nitric oxide. Probably the message isn't there, because in the mouse it comes up about a day before the mouse is born. It's very clocked to the time of birth, nitric oxide synthase expression. We don't know, of course, in people. You're not allowed to study these things. And every time I give this talk, somebody comes up to me and says, Warren, you saved my baby and they send me a picture of their baby. And this is, of course, the young man here on the left. And he was born, and he's blue, and he's hypoxic. And so in 2013, I don't have to tell you that if you're a blue baby and you don't get treated with nitric oxide, you should sue the doctor for all he's worth because it's approved and it's an appropriate therapy. So I start really from that. And I also start from the fact, and I know very well, I don't know anybody that was ever hurt breathing nitric oxide. And I've been around watching this field for about 35 years now, right? And it's 1990, 23 years. Nobody got hurt breathing NO. That's kind of interesting. There aren't a lot of medicines we use that are like that. Sure, you can give too much, you can burn the lung, you can make methemoglobinemia, but if you're not dumb, you won't do those things. I'll skip the film, just to save time. About the time we were doing the babies, we also started to do adults, and I worked with Conrad Falke and Rolf Rosaint and others, because we had the idea that a gas, by dilating the areas of the lung that were still ventilated, would reduce the pulmonary artery pressure, not change the SVR because it would bind to hemoglobin, but reduce the shunt and raise the PO2 because it would steal venous blood, steal venous blood into the ventilated portions of the lung and reduce the amount of shunt. That's contrary to all the intravenous vasodilators we play and use and give. And a lot of the ones we inhale become like this, so be careful. And of course, Rolf and Conrad, many others in Berlin did a great job. And I think we have to live with the fact that if we give peep adults with ARDS nitric oxide, it will cause a modest reduction of their pulmonary artery pressure, and in many cases, a modest increase in their arterial P to F ratio. That's true. I don't think anybody disagrees with that acutely. So you have a rescue medicine. When your back is up against the wall with somebody with a 50% shunt, you're probably going to use if you're sane. So I give you 10 reasons to use nitric oxide. First is to relieve hypoxia. Simple enough. Second, to improve VQ matching. When the prone positioning is neither feasible, you ever take care of somebody with a bunch of fractures and try and roll them over on their face? It isn't a smart idea. You ever try and start somebody's heart when they have a cardiac arrest while they're in the prone position? It's not a great idea. So 
when it's not feasible and sometimes it simply doesn't work. Reduce pulmonary hypertension. It isn't a good idea to have a high pulmonary artery pressure if you're permeable because you'll leak plasma into the lung and make a bigger mess than you started with. If the right heart is failing, and somebody mumbled today that we always used VV perfusion and the right heart never fails, bullshit. I think the right heart does fail. I think if you have bad enough respiratory failure and your thrombo is your pulmonary circulation, you'll have pulmonary hypertension. I think we don't use many Swan-Gans catheters anymore, and so we don't look but you've got to use echo, and you've got to look, and then you know when to do VV or VA perfusion. Rethink what you said in your jury report. It's not well thought out. Uh, prevent and treat right heart failure. It's got a better safety file. Name a better safety file profile than nitric oxide has. There are rare, rare drugs that haven't been around for 23 years that we don't know bad things about. Okay, it has mild anti-inflammatory effects, and thus people in the influenza and people with uh, took it to China when China had their strange flu, and people claim there is a mild anti-inflammatory, and I think it's maximum in the lung. Okay, and there there are a hundred papers showing this in animals. Uh, Another thing, those of you who are aware of this, I didn't, haven't seen any papers at this meeting on it, but in America, a hot topic is why old blood, stored blood, is bad for you. And a lot of us have worked on it, and if you read Intensive Care Medicine, the article by Barron a month or two ago, you'll see the reasons why we think in our laboratory it's really bad, and why the people at NIH think blood transfusion is terrible for ARDS. Just terrible. Look at the, at the article by Nate, Nate Nathanson is one of the authors. Uh, no doubt. I mean, it's, really, it's going gonna, it's gonna to build. And in the old days, we transfused like crazy on ECMO, and I'm sure we did a lot of harm to our patients. NO blocks that pulmonary hypertension and blocks those effects for lots of reasons. I don't have time to go into it here in 15 minutes. Uh, it's easy to titrate. You turn it on. You give a little more, you give a little less. It's pretty safe. If it works at 80, you go to 40. If it works at 40, you go to 20. It's boring. Ask your pediatrician friends. They really know how to use it. They use it well, and they do it all the time. Okay, it's easy to transport. You ever try to transport somebody on ECMO? It's a mess. It's not fun. It's not easy. It's really easy to pull a cannula out, distract a catheter from a tube. I've done it all, so I kind of know, and I've been here. It's a lot easier to turn some gas on while you're transporting somebody. When you have to go to the CT scan quickly with somebody, and you're not going to watch them very well while you're moving them around. So CT scans between hospitals for ECMO, and I think it beats prone positioning all over for doing those kinds of things. And then finally, and this is an area we don't know much about, but a lot of people have looked at, including my own lab, is when you breathe NO, you make some nitrite in humans and some nitrate, and then there are molecules that, there are enzymes that break the nitrite, nitrate, the snow hemoglobin and the nitrosyl heme, and I could go on for half an hour, but there are other molecules that break them off and make NO available in the periphery. And NO is an anti-free radical molecule that scavenges superoxide. So we're using it in a malaria trial in Uganda now. So we're looking at for extra pulmonary anti-inflammatory effects of nitric oxide. We know it shrinks myocardial infarction in pigs and mice, and they're just finishing a human trial in Europe of inhaled NO and MIs. So there's a lot of this magical things that NO does in the periphery that we don't fully understand. Kids are all different. No matter what you think about ARDS, don't tell your pediatric friends because they won't believe you. And children with ARDS are very different. They have much more spastic pulmonary circulations, and there are many more papers of surviving survival as an outcome, which we didn't find with NO when we did it before in the days 15 years ago before we knew about low tidal volume ventilation and things like that. This is just a child with a burn 
So kids are different. Don't ball them up with adults. Once again, kids are treated with SpO2 as the, as the, basically the reaction to, to look at the effect. We think it reduces barotrauma. We hate inhaled prostaglandins because they will drop the systemic pressure if you're not careful. And it, getting the dose right, it's, not, it's so hard compared to breathing NO. And once again, res respiratory syncytial virus, influenza, people are looking for the anti-inflammatory properties of NO. That's all I got to say. I hope I'm roughly on time. Thank you.